Before we get into any calculations, I want to give you an overview of lease accounting from the perspective of the lessor under IFRS 16. Now, I told you in the last video, the first thing the lessor needs to do is decide whether this is a finance lease or an operating lease. Now, let's say that it's a finance lease. If the lessor is a manufacturer or a dealer, like for example, let's say the lessor is Boeing, right? And they're going to be leasing some aircraft to, to an airline. Okay, so we've got Boeing here and they've got a captive leasing company, Boeing Capital, their subsidiary that's going to handle the lease. So they're a manufacturer or dealer. Boeing is going to record sales revenue and cost of goods sold upon the commencement of the lease. Okay, so they're going to be booking a sale here. And when you take the sales revenue minus the cost of goods sold, you're going to have selling profit. Okay, so there's going to be sell selling profit here if they're a manufacturer or dealer. You can have a situation where there's a finance lease and they're not a manufacturer or dealer and there's no selling profit. And the only thing they're going to, the only profit they're going to make from the lease is interest. I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. But let's let's go through the basics before we get too complicated. Okay, so booking a sale in Cogs and having some selling profit if they're a manufacturer or a dealer. Okay, now they're going to de-recognize the asset from their statement of financial position. Okay, so Boeing is leasing out an airplane. That airplane is no longer going to appear on their statement of financial position. Okay, so we have said they are expensing it right through cost of goods sold, but they are also going to be recording an asset a lease receivable okay and the lease receivable is going to be the present value of the lease payments okay so present value of the lease payments plus the present value of the residual value okay present value of residual value so basically the lease receivable is okay look boeing is expecting to receive money they're going to receive payments from the lessee but then they're also expecting that they're going to get this leased asset back at the end of the lease and it's going to have some kind of residual value so take the present value of each of those add it together we've got the lease receivable which ifrs 16 also refers to the lease receivable as the net investment in the lease now we are going to be recording so the lessor when i say we we're going to be recording interest revenue throughout the lease okay interest revenue and that will be calculated based on this lease receivable and we're going to use a discount rate we're basically going to multiply the discount rate times the lease receivable where the discount rate is the implicit rate of return uh, that the lessor earns on on the lease so we are and i'll show you all the calculations in the next few videos relax but we're gonna have this lease receivable and we're going to be booking interest revenue so if it's a if the lessee or excuse me the lessor is a manufacturer or dealer they're going to get two sources of profit uh when the lease commit at uh, least commencement date they're going to get the selling profit difference of sales and clogs right but then they're also going to recognize interest revenue throughout the lease now if we're talking about an operating lease okay the lessor is now we're assuming they did they said you know it's not a finance lease it's an operating lease then the asset is not going to be de-recognized it's going to stay on their uh, financial position statement of financial position and it not only stays on their statement of financial position they're going to record depreciation expense for it okay so let's say it was an airplane or it was a truck or something like that if it's an operating lease it's say okay it's not going off our statement of financial position and we're going to depreciate it over time now they're going to book instead of interest rep so there's not going to be any selling profit and there's not going to be any interest revenue instead the lessor is going to record lease revenue throughout the lease generally on a straight line basis which means they'd have the same amount of lease revenue each period okay that that'd be the general rule so very different accounting okay based on whether it's classified as a, a finance lease or an operating lease so i've got a summary here of the differences for finance lease and operating lease we just went through all this but i just thought this might be helpful to you uh seeing that under finance lease we're going to book a sale and clogs assuming i mean the lessor is a manufacturer or dealer you're going to remove the asset from the books record a lease receivable and, and then recognize interest revenue on that lease receivable over time we're not doing any of those things if it's an operating lease if it's an operating lease uh, the asset is staying on the lessor statement of financial position they're going to record depreciation uh, over time and they're going to be recognizing lease revenue on a straight line basis now this is complicated hang with me uh, when we go through the examples i think it'll be helpful in the next few videos but we need to lay some groundwork here so a summary of the finance lease rules here for a manufacturer or dealer the sale and cost of goods sold will be recognized upon commencement of the lease so first day of the lease okay that's when they're going to recognize the sale and cost of goods sold and the sales revenue okay the sales revenue is going to be the fair market value of the asset 
unless, and this is where it gets complicated, the present value of the lease payments, if that were to happen to be lower, okay, but let's just stick with the basic general rule here, so fair market value of the asset minus the present value of the unguaranteed residual value. Okay, so if there if there's a guaranteed residual value, we would not subtract anything here. It's just if there's an unguaranteed residual value. That's why I've got UGRV. There's a lot of words there. I try to keep it short, so I've got a little present value of unguaranteed residual value. Okay, so if there's an unguaranteed residual value, you subtract that from the fair market value of the asset. If there was a guaranteed residual value, you don't have anything here. It's just fair market value. The asset would be the sales revenue, and then the cost of goods sold would be the cost of the asset or its carrying amount minus present value of unguaranteed residual value. Again, if there's a guaranteed residual value, then you don't have anything there, okay? You just have the cost of the asset. So fair market value of the asset minus the cost of the asset, that would be the selling profit for the lessor that's recognized upon commencement of the lease. Now, I talked here about this unguaranteed residual value, and, and this is a complication. So hopefully this is helpful here, this little table. I mean, unguaranteed residual value, and then we got gu guaranteed residual value over here. Let me walk you through this. So when we have an unguaranteed residual value, both sales revenue and COGS are going to be reduced by the present value of that unguaranteed residual value. That, that's what I have right here, okay, when we have an unguaranteed residual value. So... If we have a guaranteed residual value, sales and COGS are not affected at all. So the selling profit is identical either way. Because look, if there's an unguaranteed residual value, it's the same here and it's the same. So you're subtracting the same amount from sales that you're subtracting from COGS. So either way, the selling profit is the same. It's just that you're going to have lower total sales revenue and lower, lower cost of goods sold if there's an unguaranteed uh, residual value. Okay. Now, at the end of the lease, if it turns out at the end of the lease that the actual residual value is lower than what the re residual value that was expected by the lessor, and there was no guarantees made by the lessor. So basically, the lessee made no guarantees about what the residual value would be. And it turns out, so the lessor had in their mind what an expectation of what the value would be of this asset at the end of the lease term. And then it's like, oh, well, it's actually worth less. We thought it'd be worth 18000 It's only worth ten. The lessor would book a loss. Okay, but if that same thing happens and there's but the re residual value has been guaranteed by the lessee, so the lessor was thinking, oh well, it's going to be worth eighteen thousand, but oh, the lessee gave it back to us, so it's only worth ten. Then, because the res residual value was guaranteed, then the lessee would need to make the lessor whole, and the lessor would receive cash from the lessee. It's complicated, uh, <laughs> so hang in there. Now. What if the lessor is not a manufacturer or dealer? So if we're not talking about Boeing trying to, you know, lease out its airplanes, what if we're just talking about like a bank or something? It's just it's, they have structured. They're the lessor and they have structured this lease where they are not selling anything. It's basically the entire thing is a financing transaction. Then there would not be any selling profit recognized upon commencement of the lease. I mentioned this briefly before. So you wouldn't have any sales revenue or cost of goods sold. Okay, but you would still de-recognize the asset. But however, you're not you're not removing any inventory or anything because this isn't a sale. But let's say it was equipment. Let's say it was like an excavator or a truck or something that was being leased. You would reduce, you know, the property, plant, and equipment account. Okay, not inventory because again, this isn't this isn't being sold, right? You reduce whatever whatever the the asset happens to be. If it was land or something, whatever it is, you would de-recognize the asset. But again, you are not recognizing this as a sale. And then you would still record a lease receivable. So there's some similarities when we've we, we've got this situation where it's a finance lease. And I hope I'm being clear here. We're talking about a finance. No, let me put that here. We've got a finance lease, and we've got they're not a manufacturer or a dealer, and we're not going to have any any selling profit. So then the only profit that the lessor uh, would be earning over the course of the lease would be from the interest on the lease receivable. Okay, now and basically at the you know outside of the lease again, let's say they were uh, renting out an excavator or something, the lessor uh, would record a lease receivable. Let's just say that it was eighty thousand dollars, and then they'd reduce uh, their property, plant, equipment account uh, by by eighty thousand dollars.